One of our keynote speakers today is the Minister of Communications, and it's my great pleasure to tell you a little bit about him and uh, bring him up on stage. Uh, we look forward to hearing your speech, Minister, and uh, perhaps answering a couple of questions. Uh, how, the, how we can affect the pace of change, bridge the div digital divide, and accelerate uh, the internet uptake in South Africa. Uh, and perhaps also, what role does government play, uh, entrepreneurs, private sector, and civil society, in bringing about and building a vibrant internet economy in the country? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Minister of Communications, Mr. Yunus Karim. <laughs> I'm especially pleased to be here. I'm eight weeks old, as you, or young rather, as you might have gathered in this row, and speaking to an informed audience like this, I'm not sure what value I can bring beyond the symbolic. But it's certainly of value to me to be with you. ICTs have transformed our society in ways not imaginable just a few decades ago. All this has been made possible by the internet, for which we have to thank the hard work of Mr. Cerf and his colleague, Bob Kahn. The internet has evolved into a fundamental feature of the economy of most societies. The future is connected, and we in South Africa very much want to be part of this connected future. Just as the agricultural and industrial revolutions transform the very nature of our society, so too is the digital revolution changing the very fabric of our society. On average, Radio broadcasters, I'm told, took 38 years to reach audiences of 50 million people. Television took 13 years. The internet took just four years. Google is, of course, at the forefront of the development of the digital global village and bringing us closer than ever before. ICTs and internet, of course, are powerful tools for social and economic growth. And this is particularly true for our economic climate. There's enormous potential for these technologies to foster innovation, particularly in developing countries. It is said, I think it's a World Bank study, that a 10% increase in high-speed internet connection can lead to an increase in economic growth of up to 1.38% for developing countries. Particularly promising for governments is the opportunity, of course, to deliver services to citizens. TVs are already capable of connecting to the internet. Jobs in the ICT industry will open up for young people, and the internet will be the starting point on this path forward. But these opportunities must benefit the poor and disadvantaged fairly. We have to guard against the country's existing socioeconomic divides being reinforced through technology between those who are connected and those who are not. We need to harness the potential of ICT to, ICT to reduce not increase the divides of our country. That's essentially our challenge. So where are we in this country in responding to the digital economy and society? We are lagging behind our peers at present. We are clear that we have to do more. Firstly, to locate ICT within the National Development Plan, National Growth Path, and the broad policies of the majority party as decided at the Mangong 2012 conference. Second, it's to stabilize the department, make it more efficient, effective, reinvigorated, fill in the critical posts. Thirdly, a less fragmented and fractious environment. Of course, there's market forces at stake, profits, but surely we can be in the national interest, national economic interest, not least, uh, be less fractious and divided. Four, realistic and realizable goals in our program between now and April, May next year when the elections take place. Fifthly, choosing these goals very strategically so that whatever we do between now and April sets the framework for a firmer, stronger foundation for delivery over the next five years. And finally, finalizing the ICT policy review. Broadband policy and strategy by the end of November, if all goes well. Thirdly, begin the rollout of digital migration. Yes, government is responsible in good measure for the delays. We agree. What is holding us up are the key private sector stakeholders in the sphere and the broadcasters. I read the other day, Vince, that in the, you'll know more about Sri Lanka, for three gigabytes, three dollars for a month. Uh, we think that the more people are online, the more successful our e-commerce ventures will be. We're liaising with the regulator, ICASA, on mobile termination rates. We have to sensibly and sensitively move to create a foundation for further reduction in costs 
of communication. ICT policy review, as I said, green paper will be done by end of November, if possible. We're also wanting um, more coordinated effort towards rolling out e-skills, emerging the relevant institutions. Google is actively working with governments and local authorities, we're pleased to say, in countries across Africa. One of the most significant developments concerning the internet and knowledge building occurred when South Africa was awarded the right to host the square kilometer array. It's likely that the volume of data expected to flow from the SKA will be more than the traffic currently experienced in all South African networks. We have amongst the worst social income inequalities in the world. Now, the digital revolution can contribute to exacerbating that on the one hand. But on the other hand, it's got huge potential to reduce those divides. In short, we owe it to this country to deliver on our promises before 1994, and let's use the internet revolution to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you.